Hey guys, here today with another Shirogrov knife. Today we have in front of us the Quantium. Now the Quantium is the latest addition to the Ursus lineup. It combines two beloved models, the Quantum, which uh, coincidentally we see here with another Ursus lineup knife, the Quantum NL, with the Hati concept, uh, which is a knife that has a composite material show side uh, G10 or carbon fiber or carbon quartz on the customs. Uh, when you combine those two knives, you get the quantium, as you see here. Again, the quantum, the quantium and the quantum uh, NL that I've shown previously are part of the Shirogorov Ursus lineup. Now, these knives come in a special unique box denoting that they are part of the Ursus line, uh, and they represent Shirogorov's uh, entry-level um, value-oriented knife lineup. Uh, and because of that, uh, we, we have two things here. Um, we have people who were previously not interested in the Shirogura brand due to the price point now taking a look at these knives. Uh, this one right here starting at $600. Uh, we also have a couple of more seasoned Shirogura collectors who are looking at this knife for something that they can really use hard uh, and not worry about, uh, you know, potentially damaging uh, a knife that uh, you know, there are only 50 pieces of in, in the, in the, for a custom division or a knife that they really treasure and that they don't want to use. Um, having the Ursus lineup here satisfy the needs, uh, of both of those, uh, different, uh, parties I think is really awesome. And because of that, I wanted to structure this video a little differently and kind of want to talk about things that perhaps to the more seasoned Shirogorov collector might be obvious, um, but something that uh, we might not see in other knives, details and features. Um, so bear with me if some of this stuff seems obvious, but uh, I'm really excited to talk about how the workshop has incorporated so many really cool features into a knife uh, that they call uh, their you know budget model. Uh, but anyways, I wanted to talk about the specs of the knife first, uh, putting up a against an F95 and a neon here for size. You can see that the Quantium is pretty much the exact same size as an F95. Of course, this is true for any of the full-size Quantum models as well. Uh, and that also means that it is smaller than the neon, of course. Taking a look at the blade, you can see that we have a cutting length. Taking a look here at tip to tip of over four inches, so even larger than the F95. With the blade open, we are also looking at a length of just under nine inches. And with the blade closed, we are looking at a handle length of just over five inches. Now taking a look at the weight of the knife. I'm also very curious of this uh, as well, uh, especially since we do have a Quantum NL here to compare it to. The Quantium is looking at 3.86 ounces. When you compare that to the Quantum NL at 4.3, uh, we're looking at almost 0.7 ounces, so almost uh, well, starting to approach a full ounce of weight reduction here. Uh, very impressive. Uh, but we are getting a significant weight reduction by replacing, you know, tight, even though this does have an inlay, uh, you know, significant amount of titanium with G10 here. Uh, now, speaking about that G10, this knife is available in two colors. Uh, we have the olive green G10, uh, and we also have the black G10 that you see here. I really like the black, um, nice and classy. Uh, it's matte as well, something that we do see it's a little bit different than the G10 used here. Uh, which kind of has this carbon fiber-ish appearance, but it is in fact G10. You can see here on the inlay side as well, on the lock side, uh, the texture or appearance difference on the G10. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and talk about the blade here. Um, the blade is 3.5 millimeter stock thickness. Uh, this is something that we're starting to see uh, a lot in the production knives. Pretty much any new knife that gets updated has been in this 3.5 millimeter blade stock. This is opposed to the four millimeter blade stock uh, on the older production knives. Really love this, uh, just means enhanced slicing ability. 
uh, and for a knife that's uh, going to see some good use, uh, you'll want a knife that is on the thinner side. Um, compare that to something like a Sabenza here, that's 3.2 millimeters uh, blade stock thickness, so very comparable in terms of blade thickness here. Now we have a high flat grind. Uh, we have blade flats here. This is something that differs from the more premium Quantums, which has uh, a fuller located in this area. Of course, the other Ursus knife, the Quantum NL, also has a similar blade profile here. So nothing new. Um, I really like the fuller on the uh, more premium Quantum. And I really wasn't too sure about this blade shape when it first came out. Uh, on the Quantum NL, but I've really gotten accustomed to it and uh, I do appreciate the simplicity, um, especially for something that's gonna be used. Um, really no qualms there about that. The blade finish on this knife, however, uh, is something that is different than on the production knives. As you can see here, we do have a coarser finish. Um, this, of course, can be looked at, at two, in two different ways. Um, of course, a lot of people love the blade finish on the production Sugar Grove knives. It's definitely a step above many other brands. Um, but having this coarser blade finish, um, of course, will take less time for the workshop to do, which helps keep the price reasonable. Uh, but it will also hide scratches better. And while the blade finish is coarse, um, it is by no means unattractive, in my opinion. Um, taking a look here at a custom division, uh, you can see we have a much smoother reflective blade tumbling uh, finish on here. Now, one thing I will say is that compared to the first batch of uh, Quantum NL's uh, Ursus line knives, when the Ursus line first dropped uh, sometime uh, a year or so ago, they did have a noticeably rough, rougher blade finish, um, more scratchy appearance that uh, uh, I personally did not find very attractive. Uh, I'm really happy to note that we've seen a much more improved finish here uh, on the Quantium and also the newer Quantum NLs that have been coming out of the workshop. Of course, again, all Ursus knives. So really nice to report that the Quantum or the Ursus lineup is starting to see a, a, a more refined blade finish. Of course, again, not at the same level as the premium production knives, uh, but something that uh, would definitely be proud to put in in a picture. Um, again, the older ones were quite scratchy, which is uh, which I really wasn't a fan of, but these are great. Taking a look at the jimping here, I'm also happy to report that this knife has the same jimping that we see on the other Quantums, uh, which is similar to the older style blade jimping that we see. Uh, this is a very old Custom Division F95. The newer production knives, the premium ones, we, we see jimping that's like this um, on the F3NS, the Hati, the F95-0. This wider blade jimping does look more aesthetically pleasing in my opinion, but it just doesn't have the same gripping power that the older style jimping does. Especially on this knife that's meant to be used hard, really love to see uh, it here, and I think it's a great choice. Now, talking about the blade grind here once again, uh, the thing that actually differentiates the Ursus lineup from the others, uh, other more premium production knives, is the fact that the primary bevel is ground using a machine. Um, when you compare that, uh, and of, of course you're still getting that same machine ground blade on the Quantum NL. One thing that is apparent here, uh, taking a look at the plunge, you can see there's just, just the slightest curve. Uh, we also get that on the Quantum, of course. Uh, and that slight curve is due to the machine grinding process. If you take a look at their hand ground blades, we get a completely straight plunge grind. Uh, this being a custom division, of course, has a hand ground blade, but all of the other more premium production Shiro Groves have hand ground blades as well. Uh, this Neon Retro, same thing as a Neon Zero, has that uh, very straight plunge grind here as well. So. Very interesting, uh, something that I had noticed and uh, confirmed that it is a result of the machine grinding process here. Uh, but the fact that the knives are ground using a machine does not mean that there isn't any hand finishing involved. Uh, just like the more premium production knives, uh, there is some hand finishing work involved to get those grind marks out of the uh, primary bevel before the blade is tumbled. So really nice to see that little uh, hand touch there as well. Taking a look at the handle here, again, we have that uh, really beautiful, subtle uh, matte G10 that, again, does contrast a little bit 
compared to the G10 used on the Quantum NL, at least for the black and black. We have this beautiful wave spanning across the middle portion of the handle. The handle is also stepped on the corners, a motif that we see on a lot of Shirogorov knives. Uh, the stepped portions are smooth G10. Taking a look at the pivot screws here, we have smaller pivot screws. Uh, this is using the same pivot screw hardware size that we see on the older Shirogorov knives. Again, something that differentiates this knife from the more premium production knives. Another thing that is also quite interesting here is because this knife is using a standoff instead of a backspacer, we have a lanyard hole that is milled directly into the G10. Uh, this is kind of an homage to the original F95, which also had standoffs. Uh, the new ones have backspacers. Uh, and because of that, we have the lanyard hole integrated into the show side here. This is like the first time that we've seen uh, kind of any composite material have a lanyard hole milled into it. Uh, the Hati, of course, which is where the uh, Quantium name comes from, uh, always had a backspacer. So there, we would never have the lanyard hole building into the carbon fiber or the G10, but we do see it here since the knife does have a standoff. Kind of an interesting uh, historical Shirogorov note there. Taking a look at the lock side, we have that inlay, again, very similar or pretty much exactly the same as uh, the Quantum NL uh, on the lock side here. We have that same wave milling going across the uh, inlay to match with the show side here. I really love the lock bar cutout uh, or the lock bar relief cut. You can see here we have uh, some milling underneath, which is a nice touch as well. Uh, and I also really want to talk about the quantum clip here because this is one of my most favorite clips from uh, Sergei Shirogorov. Uh, of course, the, fl the clip flows very well with the handle design. Uh, in fact, if you take a look at this knife, uh, if you were to take a quick glance at it, uh, you almost might not even notice a clip because of how flowing the clip is with the rest of the handle. Another thing that is really great here is I really love how the clip contacts the frame. It's actually on the chamfer of the cutout above the lock bar relief cut. It contacts the handle at that 45 degree chamfer. And we have also a very large contact patch here, which means this clip has excellent retention in the pocket. Another thing, and I think this is perhaps the most ingenious aspect about the clip design, is if you take a look at where the clip ends, it's just shy of covering the entire lock bar relief cut. Now, what this means is the lock bar relief cut now does double duty and allows your pants or whatever you're clipping the knife onto to get underneath the clip uh, without having to uh, kind of have any other design considerations for the actual clip itself. And those kinds of, uh, you know, design features kind of harmoniously coexisting together, I, I think it's just amazing. And one of the things that sets Shirogorov designs apart from other brands, in my opinion. If you take a look at the top of the clip here, we also see some really nice milling as well. Um, very similar accents to the lock bar relief cut. Also, if you take a look cl quite closely here at the titanium, you can see where it, it steps down. We also have a another line going across here, also on the bottom portion as well right underneath the step portion, we have another line. Um, so just some really nice milling accents uh, that, again, we are seeing even in the entry level model from Shirogorov. Of course, we have a lock bar insert. Um, this is pretty much a typical of all Shirogorov knives. We have a steel lock bar insert. The lock bar insert screw is external and also doubles as an over travel stop, as you can see right here, kind of peeking out on top. Now taking a look at the spine of the handle here, you can see we have this beautifully polished titanium standoff uh, that I think is just a nice little touch of bling. Uh, we have pretty much the same exact feature on the Quantum NL as well. And this is just a really nice high polished part. Uh, it is titanium. Uh, very interesting, very unique to the Ursus lineup and uh, kind of nice to see uh, such a well-finished part, something that has a little bit of uh, shine to it on something that is considered their budget model. I think that's quite interesting. 
Also interesting as well, uh, since this knife does not have a backspacer, something that has been a very common theme in the more recent production knives, uh, the backspacer also doubling as a little guard here to protect you since this knife has such a good blade to handle length ratio. You don't want this tip kind of slicing your finger open or anything in your pocket. Because the Ursus does not have, uh, the Ursus knives do not have backspacers, what Sergei has chosen to do here as a design element is to incorporate these ceramic rods uh, that act as a guard. Now you cannot push your finger or the blade tip cannot basically not cut you anymore. One thing that I don't like about this, however, is that it does make reassembly of the knife uh, a little bit more complex. Um, when these come from the workshop, the pins are kind of epoxied into uh, the handle, but when you take that out, uh, disassembly of the handle is not complex but these pins can sometimes be misaligned and having to align all three of them precisely into holes into the handle uh, can be very difficult at times. Um, there's a lot of fiddling involved with tweezers. I honestly, it would be really nice if uh, the, this design aspect was easier to reassemble. I can't really imagine how the workshop would go to fix this, however, given that the pins are so close to the edge of the handles. I was thinking some kind of titanium cap that would, uh, because they're epoxied onto one side, they wouldn't come out, and then that little titanium cap or steel would go on the other side, and the cap would obviously allow a larger target to, uh, you know, be aligned into the show side here. But again, because the these pins are so close to the edge of the handle, I don't think that would work either. Uh, kind of going off on a tangent here, but I do dislike how hard it is to reassemble. I do like the design feature. Um, some people find the pins polarizing. I think it's quite ingenious and a very, uh, very minimalistic uh, way of solving the blade tip poking issue. But I would like to see some way of having the knife be easier to reassemble in the future, especially again, this being a user oriented knife, uh, you expect the knife to be dirty and need to be cleaned. That's pretty much it for the external features. I want to talk a little bit about the internals here. Um, now, unlike the more premium production knives, we do not have any internal milling. Uh, there is a little bit of internal milling where the lock bar relief cut is. Uh, but otherwise, um, again, just another way that the workshop can keep uh, this knife more affordable than the other models. One thing that is really cool, though, is the addition of the MRBS bearing system. Now, the MRBS... Uh, that stands for a multi-row uh, ball bearing system or multi-row bearing system. And uh, some, it's a very welcome change. The other knives in the Shirogorov lineup that were more budget focused, uh, more entry level, they had been using the uh, single row ball bearing system. Uh, really nice to see it, that the workshop has gone with MRBS for this newer model here. Uh, it is a three row model. Uh, the bearing arrangement is actually unique to the Quantium. Uh, it's arranged in kind of three straight lines for the rows uh, as opposed to a spiral shaped arrangement on the uh, premium production knives. But it is in fact MRBS and you do get an incredibly smooth action. Uh, not like any of the Shirogorov bearings, uh, bearing cages were uh, rough in any way. Um, I really think that's more of a a function of how worn in the bearing track is, or sorry, the detent track, uh, the bearing track as well, actually, uh, and whether the knife has satin flats. But um, as you can see here, excellent flipping action, uh, excellent drop shot action. Wouldn't really expect any less from Shirogorov, uh, even at their entry level. Still gain a knife with an amazing action. Uh, I spoke about this earlier, but we have a internal, uh, sorry, a, uh, lock bar insert here that is steel. Um, again, this is something that is obvious for pretty much any other Shiro Grove knife, but we're still seeing it even in their entry level model. One thing that I do really like, however, is compared to other models, and this is true for all Quantums, uh, there is no ledge here. If you take a look at an F95, you can see that there is this ledge on the left side of the lock bar insert uh, right here that would eventually hit the blade. Uh, I believe they do this so that uh, you know it's time to send the knife into the workshop uh, so that the 
lock bar insert does not continue wearing across the blade. Uh, but on the Quantum design, that doesn't seem to be present here. You can see that the face of the lock bar insert is the same height as the end of the lock bar itself. Uh, so something very curious as well, uh, on the Quantum design at least. This, like other uh, Shurigrov production knives, the newer ones, has a detent ramp. Some people have uh, had complaints about the detent ramp. The Quantum, starting from when it had first come out, has always had a detent ramp. Uh, so really no complaints about that there. I'm pretty used to it. Uh, kind of make sure that you disengage the knife and that you have the detent ball on the blade flat and the knife should be quite drop shut after that. So no problems there as well, but uh, some people have been asking, especially since you would expect perhaps maybe the Ursus uh, would have less features. So you would see uh, the lack of a detent ramp, but uh, all Quantums have detent ramps. So something to talk about there as well. Now, something that I found actually quite interesting about uh, this knife compared to the Quantum NL is taking a look at the back here, you can see that uh, we, we have a couple of flares here to account for the rear body screw assembly, uh, something that we don't have on the Quantum NL. Um, we, we've seen this feature in some other knives. Uh, if you take a look at the F95 here, you can see how the handle kind of flares out a little bit here to account for that. Uh, some contouring here but um, again very interesting to see that especially since otherwise uh, besides the different material used here the different types of g10 they, they pretty much look identical uh, except for this milling here uh, very interesting something i spotted also uh, if you take a look at the rounding on the blade handle or sorry the handle of the knife here on both sides of the titanium you can see that it's it's much more rounded as opposed to uh, chamfers here wide chamfers on the Quantium. So uh, even though at first glance, these two knives look very similar on the lock side, there are some minute differences that we do see here. Um, I think stuff like that is quite interesting. The workshop really does uh, go out of their way to make sure that every model is designed uh, to be uh, its own thing, which is awesome, I think. Now, that's pretty much it for the features of the knife. Now I kind of want to go and kind of recap about some things that I really like. Um, and again, this is not only talking about this specific knife, but uh, kind of relative to uh, other non Grove knives as well. Um, we get that excellent blade to handle ratio. Again, this is something that is obvious for all Grove knives, but since the Quantum, we're getting a Quantum sized knife with the same Quantum blade shape and handle, uh, we, we're getting, you know, that, that benefit of the Quantum design, which I think is excellent. Uh, Specifically for this one, uh, we have excellent blade jimping, uh, which is great and can be a deal breaker compared to uh, the premium production knives for some people. Uh, really like to see that premium jimping or that uh, more aggressive jimping uh, on the Quantium here. The action, of course, is another uh, plus. The MRBS bearing system is really great on this model, and uh, it's as smooth as any other sugar of knife, uh, you know, especially compared to the more premium production models. Of course, the value of the knife, I think, is excellent. Uh, $600, uh, when you compare that to, say, an F95 at, um, you know, over $1,000, uh, we're, we're getting something that you can feel a little bit more comfortable abusing or, uh, you know, carrying in your pocket every day and getting it banged up. The Quantum design itself, I think, is uh, amazing as well. Um, even though the knife has a lot of flowing lines and some angles to it, uh, in, in my opinion, I, I have kind of uh, hands that are on the smaller side. Uh, it has no obvious hotspots, uh, re regardless of how I grip the knife, um, which is quite impressive. I really wasn't too sure about the Quantum design in, design in general when it first came out uh, in 2019. Um, but I, yeah, I continue to grow more fond of it, and I really love that aspect of it. The, the, the handle is quite comfortable in the hand. Um, the Mini Quantum, however, d having everything shrunk down, I do see a little bit of hot spots with it, but the full-size Quantum, still no issues, uh, even to this day. I also really like that they've improved the uh, finish of the Ursus line in general. Uh, I hope to continue to see it improve, but as it is right now, uh, this kind of rugged blade finish I think would be really great for a user knife. 
And one thing that I've actually noticed about the quantum, and this is very specific to just your gloves in general, is that uh, the, when you have your knife in hand and you're pushing down the spot of on the quantum on the cutting edge uh, that will contact first given a, a kind of usual blade cutting angle is much closer to the center of the blade compared to an F95 which is a little bit more farther out here. I know this is the an older style profile F95 uh, for any of you eagle eye sure grow collectors out here but even on the newer F95 or sorry F95 blade profile with larger belly uh, it's still uh, closer out towards the tip than it is on the quantum. So for cutting, I actually think the quantum blade profile is a little bit better than the F95. Things that I really don't like that I would like to see improved. Um, again, I talked about the big, the disassembly and reassembly uh, issues with these three pins here. I think that's really my biggest concern. Uh, a lot of you guys who know me, I really love to disassemble my knives, putting them back together, this is a little bit of a pain, oh, sorry, this is a pretty big pain, having to jiggle the pins in with tweezers to make sure everything is aligned. We'd really like to see them address that issue in some way, especially since now that we've had it in, you know, the Quantum NL, the Quantium, and also the Neon NL, this three pin arrangement. It'd be really nice if uh, the pins were easier to reassemble. Um, <clears throat> also, I'd like to see the lock bar relief uh, widened here. Now, this is something that a lot of Shurigrov uh, a lot of Shurigrov collectors might notice uh, on a lot of Sergei's other designs. You can see here that the lock bar relief, uh, not the actual relief cut here, but uh, there's actually usually a chamfer, and the show side scale is usually higher up uh, to allow you access to the lock bar. You can see we have not only a chamfer, but again the show side handle. Uh, being higher up here. Uh, this allows you for really nice comfortable access to the lock bar. Now the quantum design does not have this uh, higher access cut on the show side. What we instead have is two scallops here on both sides of the handle. Um, this combined with the thinner blade stock, that 3.5 millimeter blade stock, means that it's a little bit harder to access the blade. You're kind of having to wedge your hand in or your finger into there to disengage the lock. Um, it is by no means impossible. As you can see here, I can pretty much do it effortlessly, but it just doesn't feel as comfortable as the F95. And um, I thought this was something that was unique to the Ursus, but it ended up being something that uh, taking a look at other quantums that I've had, uh, we still have that same design thing. So it seems to be an intentional part, especially since literally every other work, uh, every, every other shot, uh, knife from the workshop has had that higher relief kind of show side, except the quantum, it seems. Um, so I really would like to see that addressed. Uh, taking a look at the neon here as well, you can see we have a relief cut as well. Uh, but I would like to see that, um, again, having a higher relief cut just allows more lock bar access for easier disengagement. Uh, and also, I would like to see eventually a orange version. Um, for the quantum NL, we have uh, black, olive green, and also a bright orange color uh, insert for the inlay. I would like to see this knife being done in orange. I think it would be a great hit. Um, and actually, once the orange comes out, maybe I'll get that one instead of the black here. But um, again, really not too much of a, a negative against the knife. Just would like to see uh, the colorways be on par with the other Ursus knife, the Quantum NL here. But anyways, that's pretty much it for this knife. Again, I know this one ran quite long compared to some of my other videos, but I, want, I wanted to frame a lot of these points uh, in a way that would make it digestible for people who uh, have not encountered Shura Rob knives before. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I'm actually really excited to be using this knife for a couple months, uh, really put it to its paces and um, maybe document some of uh, the use along the way and perhaps maybe do things such as a disassembly uh, video as well since I've mainly been doing knife review videos but it would be really nice to take a look at the insides of the knives as well. I know a lot of guys have been requesting that. Uh, but anyways that's pretty much it for this. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it was full of knowledge uh, that would uh, kind of you know tune your eyes to the uh, Ursa series. A lot of people have uh, been looking at uh, again, this knife, because of that price point and other sure graph collectors, uh, maybe not so much because they have other sure graphs already, but there's still a lot of really cool things about this knife that I really like and uh, hope I was able to share those with you today. 
see you guys next time, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day.